Hello YouTube, this is the Magnum94 here, and for those of you who didn't know, I am a big fan of just the idea of the death battle. Now, for those, for those of you who haven't seen the Screw Attack series Death Battle, it's basically a series where they pit two characters from different universes together and see who would win. Um, it's just a really cool idea that I've honestly been just thinking of ideas even before I had seen the first episode of Death Battle, just ideas of two, just the idea of two different, usually evenly matched characters fighting each other in an epic showdown to see who would win is just a really cool idea to me. So I have five ideas myself that I've been thinking about for a long time. Uh, most of these I've been thinking of before the um, I had seen the show. So let's just get right into it. I have five here, so let's just, I'm going to go over the first three kind of quickly so that I can get the last two in more detail. So the first one, Salmus versus Master Chief. Now, <clears throat> both of these are very, very skilled, one being a bounty hunter, one being a soldier. And the reason why I think these two would be a really good match is because for the longest time, I'm sure I'm not the only one who thought of this. <coughs> Sorry. For the longest time, I always thought that Samus and Master Chief were the same character. Because, well, I knew who Samus was, and I, I had seen Master Chief. But for the longest time, ever since I got Melee, Smash Bros. Melee, and I saw Samus, and then next, whenever I saw Master Chief, I had thought it was Samus, because I didn't know what game Samus was from. So I would have thought, hey, that's Matt, that's, well, Master Chief, that's Samus, but, because they both have the helmet, armor, a gun, you know, I just thought they were the same character. And I think they're, from what I've seen from the two death battles that each of them have had already, I, I think they would be pretty evenly matched. They both have very good athletic skills, they both have giant guns that they can shoot, they both have missiles, grenades, I think it would be a pretty awesome match. Now, there already has been a kind of death battle-esque thing that has already happened somewhere. Um, I think it was by Machinima. I don't remember. But that was a really awesome fight. Although it didn't really end in either of them. It didn't really end in either of them dying. It ended in with both of them fighting off the giant army, which was a cool scene, of course. But just watching them two fight each other would be a really cool idea, I think. The only problem I think these two would have of being in an actual death battle is that Samus has already been in two in uh, two death battles, both of them against Boba, Boba Fett, of course, and then Master Chief is already um, fighting against the Doom guy. So they have brought back Batman before to fight it. Had America after he already, unfortunately, died to Spider Man. Although I don't agree with that. Whatever. Um. But I think they could do it. I I, it, I would love if they did it. Now, number two, I'm honestly surprised, well, really impressed, that they haven't done this one yet. Gandalf versus Dumbledore. Now, both of these are basically master magicians in their respective, uh, respective universes. Now, I haven't seen all of Lord of the Rings, so I don't know all of the abilities that Gandalf has. But just from what I have seen, I think it'll be a really cool match. Like, they both have very powerful magic abilities. Gandalf is really good with a sword. Dumbledore has can summon fire. He has a Vodka Dabra he could use if he if he felt like it, I guess. I mean, Harry Potter did use Vodka Dabra in the, um, in the uh, Luke versus Harry Potter fight, which, again, Harry should have won that, but whatever. I won't get into... I won't get into my gripes with the show itself right now. I might do that in a later video. But I would, I personally would think that Dumbledore would win. But like I said, I haven't seen all that Gandalf is capable of. Um, his fight with the with the um, Balrog was pretty impressive. But I don't know if he has the massive amounts of different abilities that Dumbledore can use. Because just in the fight with um, with Voldemort in the fifth movie, Dumbledore was able to summon giant water balls, control fire, teleport, 
I mean, he can kind of do whatever he wants. And Gandalf is might be a little more e- overall experienced. I'm not sure, but I think Dumbledore would win personally. If anyone in the comment section has seen all of uh, Lord of the Rings and uh, Harry Potter and wants to give more insight on that fight, please do because lack because of my lack of knowledge of Lord of the Rings might just be why I think Dumbledore would win. So. The fourth, or pff, the third one, <laughs> um, Frieza versus Mewtwo. Now, when I saw the One Minute Melee, another show inspired by Death Battle, it's also um, hosted by Screw Attack. When I saw the One Minute Melee of Mewtwo versus Frieza, I think that alone has been my favorite Death Battle and and um, One Minute Melee combined. Like, just the way those the dynamic between just their power level is amazing. And they didn't even use all of Mewtwo and Frieza's powers. Like, Mewtwo didn't Mega Evolve, Frieza didn't go into any other forms. I think they both, they have a really, they're really evenly matched. And plus they look, the, they look like pretty much exactly the same, especially when Mewtwo is in his Mega form. Like, pretty much people always co- compare them anyway, so why not? They can both teleport, they can both shoot giant laser beams, they can... I mean, Mewtwo can control stuff with his mind, but Frieza can create giant, giant balls of energy. Um, and Mew, then again, Mewtwo can um, become... can Mega Evolve into two different forms. One being more physical, and one being more speed-based and special. So... And then again, Frieza can uh, can become more powerful when he goes to his different forms. So I would have to go with Frieza personally. But now that I think about it, Mewtwo does have the ability to create to create catastrophes. Because in the first in the first Pokemon movie, he created thunderstorms, and that was he created this giant th- storm that was said at least in the Japanese. Uh, the uh, Japanese um, version of the movie. It said that if Mewtwo wasn't defeated before before too long, it would the storm was strong enough to destroy the entire world. So if Mewtwo has that much power, he might just be able to create a storm and create tornadoes and lightning that could destroy Frieza then and there. Then again, Frieza has at least part of him survived an entire planet exploding. So, I would have, I would think Frieza would win. He did win the one minute melee, but that's doesn't, that's not based off research. And just the way that Mewtwo and Frieza fight, I think Mewtwo would outspeed Frieza, especially in his um uh, Mega Y form. But Frieza, I think, has more raw power. Then again, Mewtwo does have a huge arsenal of attacks he can use. Hmm. They can both teleport. They can both. They're both really good at hand-to-hand combat, especially when Mewtwo's in his uh, Mega X form. So it's kind of up in the air for me. I, I, I'm leaning towards Frieza, but Mewtwo still has a really good chance. I just want to see this fight happen because <laughs> that one minute that they were fighting was might might have been the the best one minute I've ever seen on YouTube. Period. So yeah. Mm. Then again, maybe Mewtwo would win. I don't. I don't know. In the for all of these in the comments, tell me who you think would win and say why. I'm still going back and forth on who would win, but I'm gonna move on to the next one just to save time. Now, the one that I specifically made this video for, well, the two really, but the this one in particular. Suna from Reborn versus Natsu from Fairy Tale. Now, I don't think that this death battle has a remote chance of happening, just because Reborn isn't the most popular anime, and they would have to take a lot of liberties in the fight between these two. Now, for those of you who don't know who either of these characters are, Natsu is the base, basically the son of of the um, uh, fire dragon Igneal. So he has fire powers. Um, he he eats fire to gain power. 
he has the ability to basically morph his body into different when he gets angry or like when the bag battle gets really intense, he has the ability to morph his body into different dragon parts. Like he can make scales, he can have fangs, claws. I think he even spiraled wings at one point. So he's he'll be a pretty formidable opponent. Then Suna, he can he basically has the fire spirit powers of this universe. Um, and the reason I say fire spirit um, is because in this universe, in the reborn universe, fire or the fire that Suna produces, or flames as I call them, they're not actual fire. It's more or less a manifestation of their their burning spirit that they're shooting out. So Suna has fire powers that he can control, and so does Natsu. So, and Suna, he can do this motion and absorb flames. And Natsu can just eat fire to gain power. Which is why I said that I don't think it would happen, because they would have to take a lot of liberties with this fight. Then again, they have, they have, uh, the people at Screw Attack have shown to take liberties before, like, <coughs> Luke Skywalker was able to block, um, was able to defend against, or he was able to deflect, uh, uh, Avada Kedavra and even, um, Spell, Expelling Armus, which should have just made the lightsaber come out of his hand, but he blocked it instead, which I think is wrong, but whatever. So, the reason I think these two would be so evenly matched is because Natsu, <laughs> Natsu eats fire, Suna can do this and absorb fire, so, and I think Natsu can do that and absorb, he absorbs the power into himself. So, it would basically come down to who has more, who has more power and who has more fighting experience. Now, Suna, I think, has more powerful attacks. And plus he has the ability to, to fly on his own. I think... I don't remember, because I haven't seen all of Fairy Tale, but I saw all that. I saw up until the the uh, battle with Laxus. After that, I didn't care enough to really... I few, saw a few episodes after that, but I didn't really... I kind of fell out of enjoying, enjoying the series, because it just got very repetitive, and I didn't really like it as much anymore. But up until then, I don't think Natsu really flew. I don't really remember, but if he did... Then they're evenly matched there too. Um, so not Suna, he has the ability to basically he has these gauntlets that allow him to channel his energy and like shoot these fire out there. So he's able to do like hold his hands up and shoot these giant fire like giant fire uh, blasts out of them. Um, that would be so big that I don't think Natsu would be able to eat it all. Whereas Natsu, his basically finisher attack is creating this giant fireball that he slams down his on his opponent. But I think if Suna does this motion and absorbs it all, I think the fireball wouldn't would wouldn't be big enough that he couldn't absorb it all. So I think Suna would win, and plus they both have basic like uh, fire punch, fire kick, just little fire blasts, you know, the basic fire attacks. So, Suna, I think Suna has Natsu checked on that front, but I think Natsu has more fighting experience. Like, the the people that Na uh, Suna has fought, they're basically just slightly stronger humans in this world. Um, the strongest person that Suna ever fought, at least in the anime, I haven't read the manga yet, but at least in the anime, was Bak Bakuran. And he was pretty powerful for this universe. But I can guarantee that he is nowhere near as powerful as anything that Natsu has fought. <coughs> like, um, Laxus, he has, he basically a uh, lightning user. He almost destroyed the entire, the entire uh, fairy tale village by himself. 
Bakuran, I don't think he could have done that. And Natsu pretty much beat him by a beat Loxus, not single-handedly, but he pretty much beat him, like, it, it came down to one-on-one -on -one fight between them two, and Natsu beat him pretty, pretty decisively. Plus, I think Natsu is overall better at hand-to-hand -hand combat than Suna is, especially when he grows his claws and fangs. So, I think they would overall be pretty evenly matched, but... With Natsu having more fighting experience, being better at hand-to-hand -hand combat, and overall, I think, being more agile, plus having being able to fight villains that are way more powerful than anything, anything Suna has come, come against, I think Natsu would have the upper hand in this fight. Now, if anyone in the in the comment section has read further in, the man, on, in, in either manga, please tell me, because... I haven't seen all that Natsu or Suna has done. Maybe something Suna did later um, to sway him to win this battle, but from what I've seen, I think Natsu has the upper hand. Now, the final death battle. <coughs> this is the one that I made that I specifically made this video for. Ganondorf versus Bowser. Now, both of these are the big the the big baddies of the Mario, or the Zelda and Mario universe, respectively. And I honestly think they would be very evenly matched. Now, I I actually posted a comment um, with a few of these uh, death battle suggestions in the comment section of one of, on one of the death battle videos, and people got into this huge argument saying basically writing off Bowser as having no chance of beating Ganondorf. Now, they seem to they seem to forget that Bowser does have some magic abilities. Like he has the ability to he has the ability to grow. His size is ever changing for like he can shoot fire. He when he becomes Giga Bowser, he has random dark and ice powers. So and plus, he can whenever he he can create like earthquakes when he when he does his Bowser bomb. So <coughs> I think you're not giving Bowser enough credit. The people who who said he has no chance against Ganondorf. Now Ganondorf, he does he does use swords. He has mag he has magical fireballs. He has other dark wizard powers. I am not using the Ganondorf from Smash Bros. That Ganondorf sucks. Um, like, if we're using that universe, Bowser beats him every time. Unless, of course, you are using the dirty tactic of the offstage Ganon grab, slam down, dead. But I'm not counting that. <laughs> now, here's how I think this fight would happen. See, Bowser and Ganondorf would meet each other. With Bowser being, I think Bowser just by him, I'm going to go with the Bowser that Mario usually fights in the standard platformers. The one that's a, that's that's like maybe 8 feet tall, what Ganondorf I say would be 7 feet tall. So Bowser's a little taller than Ganondorf. And plus he has his claws, his tail you can use, his um, jaws, fire, fire powers, or fire breath. Then Gandorf does have his swords, his does raw strength, the Triforce of Power he can call upon, and other dark dark wizard powers. So they would just be like clashing claw to sword, fire f fire breath to fireball, dark power. Um, I think Bowser would be a little more agile personally. Um, so I think it would they would be fighting, and it would eventually end off with. With Ganondorf basically Sparta kicking, um, cause he, cause I'm not saying that the Ganondorf wouldn't be couldn't be inspired by Smash Bros, but it would be that Ganondorf. Basically, end off with Ganondorf Sparta kicking, um, Bowser off the edge of a cliff into a vat of lava, and then Ganondorf walks away, <coughs> and then Kamek comes by and like does his little magic thing. And then Bowser rises up out of the out of the lava as Gig as Giga Bowser and slams down and like 
punches Gandalf really hard. Now you could say that this breaks the rule that that uh, that battle sets of not having any outside help. But I will, and I would agree with you with that in that case. If I wasn't going to have Ganondorf also acquire the Triforce of wisdom and uh, wisdom and courage, that he can become Pig Ganon. Um, so it would probably how that would happen was would be Ganon. Uh, Dika Bowser would just be slashing, doing all this stuff, basically winning against um, Ganondorf until Zelda and Link come by to see what is happening. Because I'm assuming that this would take place in the in the land of Hyrule. Just so that this could happen, um, and then Gan uh, Giga Bowser like breathe the fireball both of them, and then they both basically basically die, because <laughs> um, they've done throwaway guys like that before in other death battles. So I wouldn't put it past them to do this. So then Gandorf would like run over to the or maybe even teleport. I forgot that Gandorf can teleport. So I think that would also give him an upper hand in the initial fight with just Gandorf and Bowser. <coughs> So Gandalf would teleport over and like grab the two two other pieces of the Triforce, while uh, Bowser would shoot the giant fireball at him. It would show a giant explosion, and then Giga Bowser would turn and walk away. Then it would show the giant glowing of maybe dark. Either way, it would show like it's glowing out of the out of the smoke that the fireball created, and then uh, Pig Ganon Gandalf rises out. And then the giant epic showdown starts. Now, here's where I think Giga Bowser might have the upper hand. See, even though uh, Pig Ganon does have, hold on, mm, sorry, does have two giant swords, he does have dark magic powers. He does have a weakness in, in his tail, which is where in Ocarina of Time you actually have to hit him in order to deal damage. So he does have that weakness. Whereas Giga Bowser, he does have. If we're going off the of Giga Bowser from, from um. From Smash Bros, he he t can take damage, but he doesn't really have one specific weak point. If we're going off the Giga Bowser. From uh from Mario from the Mario platformers, I guess if you hit him in the head enough times, he would eventually die. But either way, <coughs> they both. If we're going, I'm specifically going off the Giga Bowser from from Smash Bros. So I feel like it would it would be a really epic fight. With Bowser having the ability to freeze Pig Ganon again, like with his uh with his down smash and uh smash with his spin around and freeze things. Um, then again, Ganondorf is kind of the embodiment of all evil, and he does have the giant swords. Ugh. Um. Then again, Gan. Actually, okay, now I think about it, Gandorf has to win. For no other reason than Gandorf can only be defeated by the Master Sword. I do have a feeling that they would be able to make it so that if, if, they, did decide that, if they did decide that Bowser could win, they would make it so that the, the Master Sword didn't matter in this situation. But Zelda fans are are kind of the craziest fans out there, except maybe Sonic fans. So I think in order to make this fight legitimate, they would have to have Gandorf win. It would, it would come pretty close, but Gandorf can only be killed, or Pig Ganon can only be killed by the Master Sword. So in this case, I think Gandorf would have to win. If they if they said that, that that's not a factor, I feel like Bowser has the slight upper hand. I can't really tell you why exactly, but I just have a feeling that Giga Bowser would win against Pig Ganon. <coughs> but, okay, 
if it was just Bowser and Gandorf, if they if they didn't allow outside help with Kamek and the other pieces of the Triforce, I also feel like I feel like Bowser would win there too. Now, Ganondorf has been very, very resilient when it comes to coming back to life. Like, he survived for over a hundred years in the Twilight Realm with a sword with a sword stuck in his chest, and when he when he found the right opportunity, he just kind of broke. He just took the sword out, broke out, and escaped from the Twilight Zone, Twilight Realm. Then again, Bowser has died multiple, multiple times, and has just come back. Even if it has just been at come back as a uh, um, dry Bowser, he's come back every single time. Over he, I think there have been over thirteen Mario games where Bowser has been defeated, thrown into love at the end of the match, or into the game, and then he just come back in the next one. So he's. And you, you could say that is because of the uh, Kamek bringing him back to life, but even even then, in the uh, mm, Gandorf does have a wider a wider variety of powers he can use, plus his swords. Maybe Gandorf will win there. Mm. I honestly don't know. I I think they're pretty evenly matched. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I if I were to say a winner, I might have to change my mind and go with Gandorf here. Now I think about it, but I do think Bowser has a pretty good chance of winning. So, um, now that you've heard my ideas of of death battles, and I might have a part two to this later on if I think of uh three or more ideas, and I even just thinking of it on my head, I can think of a few more, but I'm not going to reveal them right now because I want to say that for another video. If you have any ideas for a death battle that you want to leave in the comments, please, I would love to hear them. I might even integrate them into my next episode. And I also might make an episode talking about just things that kind of annoy me with the death battle system itself, because... I'm not going to say too much right now, but there have been some fights that I feel were very, 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 um, uncharacteristic and, uh, improbable, let's put it that way. And I'm not talking about Goku versus Superman, because Superman would win that. And I'll get, might get that, might get into that in my next video, too. So, leave your... Uh, leave your comments about death battle ideas. If you want to debate me about any, um, or not debate really, but if you want to give your impressions on any of the death battles that I've already stated. Oh, I, actually, I didn't say who would win against Samus and Master Chief. Um, probably, I would go with Samus just because of, um, well, then again, Master Chief had, no, Samus has done more. I might have to go with Samus. Like, I think her giant laser versus Master Chief's giant laser, I think Samus's would win. And even if it didn't, Samus would be able to break out as Zero Suit Samus and would then be more agile. So I think Samus would have the upper hand overall in that fight. <coughs> so, leave your comments down below. Um, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. See ya.